For this episode of Let's Talk Jinx, we're talking patch 12.9 notes. Now, this isn't the massive patch that they're doing all the stat changes on to reduce damage. That is next patch. But for this patch, they have a few buffs and nerfs. None of them might affect Jinx, but we'll see as we dive into this, which is what we usually do when we cover a patch, as we talk about the patch, but also what specifically to look out for if you're a Jinx player, because this is a Jinx channel and Jinx video. So here we go. First and foremost, we do see... And start of the changes, some base stat changes going to some other champions, though. So they're kind of already setting the groundwork. And one of the things I want to talk to you guys about before we really get into the patch proper is also with the 50 health nerf. We felt different ways about that based off the last video. But with the coming announcement of the stat changes, how do people feel that will then affect that nerf? Will that nerf actually feel less because there'll be like an increase in magic resist and health per level and stuff like that? Will it be still hurtful because it's like, well, it's probably going to be good, but it'd be even more good if we still had that stat and things like that. Comment with that in the comment section down below as we go through this as well. But first and foremost, Braum. So because he's a support and you could be playing with or against him, we'll mention him. Passive cooldown is decreasing late. The E damage reduction is also being increased. They're saying everyone's favorite Poro protector has been feeling a little left out in the cold recently. We're hoping to bring a smile back to his glorious mustache and his Poro's faces by beefing up his protective power. Funny timing, Braum, because we could have used you when Jinx was actually still meta. The first day of MSI kicked off and I got to watch the first four or five games and didn't see Jinx in any of them. Totally not biased, totally not salty. But his passive, concussive blows per target, uh, the cooldown, it looks like it is going down later on. And Unbreakable, the damage reduction is being increased. So if you're playing with a Braum, he'll be able to protect you and also put like the uh, concussive blows on people uh, a little bit more often than usual, which works well with Jinx and her minigun because you have extra attack speed in your minigun. You can kind of combo that. Braum isn't like the ideal support for some people when they think about playing Jinx. They want that peel and protection. But when it comes to hard engage, Braum and Jinx can kind of work together pretty well, actually. And then Unbreakable will also be able to take more damage reduction, right? At max rank, it's going from 40 or possibly 45. The lines cross right through it. But it's going up to 55%. Maybe it can block the entirety of a Misfortune ult now and then some, you know what I mean? So there you go. As we keep going. Okay, so funny enough, there is a Master Yi nerf. It doesn't really affect Jinx at all, but it's just kind of funny because I was trying to play some ARAMs kind of casually and stuff, and there's always a Master Yi building Dust Blade Collector, and uh, that that's um, that's just funny to see that there's a Master Yi change at all in there. But Pike, however, who is a support, the passive gray health conversion is being increased, the Q mana cost is increased, the mana fund increased, now refunds mana upon hitting an enemy champion, the R cooldown decreased, your cut opportunities reduced. Pike's been a little bone skewered toward mid ever since his changes long ago in Season 9, and we're reverting them to bring the Blood Water Ripper back to bot lane. We're also adjusting some other parts of his kit to further tune him toward the unconventional support that he is, kills and bags secured. So just a quick side note, Riot is usually fine with the champion, they're trying to release it for a certain role, it also can be viable in another role, but they ultimately want that champion to first and foremost be viable and balanced in that main role they release them in. So while they're not necessarily saying you can never play mid pike if you are that kind of a person, they do want support pike to be like the main pike though, and he's just not been down there at all. And maybe that's good for us Jinx players, if you're playing with a pike, maybe you don't like playing with a pike. It's kind of hard for you to snowball because you kind of want the kills to snowball yourself, of course. And Pike's kind of about getting the kills himself. So you might have different opinions depending on who you are as a Jinx player watching this right now. But the passive, Gift of the Drown, the damage converted to Grey Health when near two or more enemies has gone up. The Q, oh, and that's also based off of Lethality. So they're going to want to be encouraging this Pike, support Pike, to still be building Assassin. And so he's going to want the kills just like you're going to want the kills. And it's going to kind of, I guess it's going to depend Right, because if, like, if Pike's getting, like, he's, like, someone's getting away and Pike can go in and get the kill and you can still get the assist and the gold, it's probably not that bad, honestly. But I understand, like, if you're the carry, your mentality might be, I want the kills. But anyways, the Q Bone Skewer now refunds mana upon hitting an enemy champion. The mana cost uh, is also going from 50, 55, 60, 65, and 70 to 74, 78, 82, 86, and 90 to kind of compensate probably for the mana refund if you actually land it. While the mana refund is going from 50% to 75%. Yeah, it's almost 100% if it goes up another 25%. So that, I understand the mana cost increase now. It's going to get that back and then some. But the death from below, the big one. The cooldown is going from 120, 180 seconds to 185 and 70 seconds. A lot of assassin items have cooldown in them too, so that would be interesting. A pike no longer receives your cut gold upon successfully executing enemy champions with his R. Last 
assisting ally will still receive your cut. Pike no longer receives additional your cut gold when allies kill enemies within death from below's execution area. I didn't actually know that was a thing. But basically, so it looks like he, you're, you're still going to get the cut. If you're Jinx in this situation, you're still getting gold. You're still getting, you know, uh, that's that's the idea. And again, because they want to hit mid lane Pike too, they can't let him get gold. They, they want him to be like a supportive, I'll kill people, but you still get profit kind of a person. And if you're playing against Pike, it looks like the thing you really want to do is dodge the Q, by the way. Uh, th this one probably first and foremost above anything else in this patch because the man is only refunded if he lands the Q on an enemy champion. Either he hits them or he throws the hook out. But the mana and cost is so much higher now that if he's missing these Qs, it's going to drain his mana pool and he won't be as threatening to you despite your lack of mobility and stuff in the laning phase. So if the big takeaway of nothing else playing against Pike is Jinx, dodge the Q. It's kind of like other hook champions like Thresh, Nautilus, Blitzcrank. Dodge the Q, but the difference is Pike might be severely punished for missing that now because he won't get any of the mana refund at all. So there you go. Renata Glass, who's also support. Base armor decrease, passive damage decrease. Renata Glass is on her way to monopolizing bot lane at all levels of play, and business is really starting to boom in Elite. She's been getting a bit too much value prop out of her passive, whereas her return on investment for damage oriented support items have been relatively low. These small adjustments toward AP item scaling should help balance and diversify her build portfolio. So while her base armor is going down, it looks like they want to let her be able to kind of build several things, including support items, but even I guess just regular items depending on. So if you're playing with a Renata Glass, this is a little bit of a takeaway, but we won't know until the stat changes really hit. Um, she might be like slightly squishier, especially in the early game, if you like to stack the bush and try and do like cheese with Renata as your duo or something, be careful about that. Um, but this is probably where a lot of the main changes are. The additional magic damage when Renata marks a target, uh, span class attribute is changing, and the additional magic damage against marked targets is also changing, if I can also speak. Let's see, Rengar, Shivana. Bug fixes, Thresh. Here we go. Passive AP and bonus armor per soul increased. W shield strength scaling with souls increased. What is the value of a soul? Currently not much. Thresh has fallen off quite a bit, particularly in average and skilled play. So we're increasing his scaling power by making it more worthwhile to collect the essence of the dead. Gotta catch them all. Passive damnation. Ability power and bonus armor per soul is going from 0.75 to a full 1. And on the W, the dark passage, the shield strength is going from 60, 90, 120, 150, 180 per 1 soul to 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180 per 2 souls. So the shield's going to be a little stronger if he's collecting souls. And also the souls he just gets per like the armor bonus and ability power is also going up to 1. Which is interesting because uh, that kind of makes a bit more sense in my opinion. He is a support that tends to build more tankier as it is, so helping him get tankier is probably a good idea. Um, so that just, I don't know, that seems just kind of right. So if you're playing with the Thresh, basically when he's going to collect, like the, soul, the souls pop like right next to the minion wave. It's not like he's going to be roaming like Bard or something, so don't worry about that. Um, but maybe he will be a little bit more beefier as the laning phase goes on if it lasts longer. If you guys roam, you guys swap to another lane at some point because you take a tower or you need to take a tower somewhere else, etc. His shield, and this is the big one. Because this is the lantern that no one knows how to take. It The shield's going to be stronger. So if you've never taken the lantern for anything else, it will protect you more if you take it. So prioritize taking the shield, please. Uh, if you're going against Thresh, meanwhile, uh, there's I don't there's nothing you can really do to stop him from getting these souls. Except maybe trying to punish people when they're trying to last hit your minions. But even then, I think the souls might still pop. So you can't really stop that all that well. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Keep that in mind. Varus. Passive attack speed gained on minion and champion kills increased. W magic damage on hit increased. Varus has been relatively weak since his Lethali nerfs last season. We're buffing his on hit builds back up to make his vengeance viable again. You know like Jinx was missing from the pro scene from like three years and then she finally got meta and now she's just got kicked out the meta again. Varus was, is, he was there last year and now they're like, oh, we, we want him back already. But Jinx won't get that treatment, huh? It's my job to be biased because it's the Jinx channel, alright. But at the same time, so, because I do play Varus too. It's a strat that people use if you're ever going against Varus as Jinx, or really just against Varus period in lane. One of the things he likes to do, if they're good at uh, using their passive, is what the passive does is on a non-champion kill, so like minions, they gain attack speed. It's like Get Excited, but if Get Excited worked on minions, um, but not as you know effective. Jinx's attack speed is faster. But anyways, long story short, what you do if you think you're about to go in for an engagement or a trade, you want to set up the minion wave that the minions are low on health, last hit them to get the attack speed, and then you go in and trade on your opponent. Now, one of the ways you can mitigate this is a couple of ways, some of them better than others, but I'll, I'll go over all of them. 
One, you could zone Varus. When you see that setup coming, if they're a good enough Varus player, have the Flame Chompers ready. Because what you can do is just ruin all that bonus attack speed he just got by stunning him, you know, snaring him with the uh, Flame Chompers. Uh, bullying him when he steps up every time to try and set the minion wave up. So switch to Rockets form specifically to hit him when he's hitting your minions, and then swap back to minigun so that you don't waste too much mana. Um, and make basically chunk away at his health, so if he still tries to go through with this, and his support either hits their stuff, or maybe even whiffs their stuff, he's also beat up, and he has to wonder if a trade would be worth it with someone who has a minigun that will also ramp up attack speed the longer the trade goes on. It gives you a bit of an advantage of health in that regard. Um, and then another thing is also just, uh, it looks like the blight, the, the quiver, the bonus magic on hit is going up. Which basically is those little floating things that are around people when he's auto-attacking people multiple times. Uh, so you want to be careful of that in a trade too, because that will give him some bonus damage. Uh, especially if he throws his Q out in the middle of the trade. So that's some ways you might be able to mitigate that as Jinx. Uh, is to try and find ways to either beat up on him or just be ready to stun him with the Flame Chompers. Maybe even you have, you know, like a Braum or Leona yourself. Uh, make it risky for him to want to try and do that strat. But that's basically why that's even a thing, and that's what various players utilize if they're actually paying attention to their passive at all. Now, when we get to items, it looks like there's not much there. There are some bug fixes. There are some skins coming out. Let's see. The High Noon Leona. So, speaking of Leona, why I mentioned Leona is because you might see Leona in your games. High Noon Leona is coming this patch. Uh, you also will probably see Varus, and that's part of the reason he got buffed is because he has a skin coming. Uh, so there you go. High Noon Varus will probably be a thing you have to worry about. There's also the EDG skins, which includes Aphelios, as a matter of fact. So you might see Aphelios, and you might see Yumi in your games, at least for a little bit. Like, usually when skins come out, I say like the first three or four days, you'll probably see people playing just for those skins, getting to use those skins. And then afterwards, they might actually go back to the meta if their champion is not good enough anyways to, you know, uh, contest with that. But anyways, that's going to be all for this video from me. So thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification, the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next, because I can have a lot of kinks. So until this time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching, and enjoy pizza responsibly.